The N64 was home to a veritable treasure trove of classics, and Nintendo fans of the late 90s were spoilt for choice when it came to top quality gaming, even if they did have to use that bizarre three-pronged controller. While Sony and Sega were embracing disc-based technology, Nintendo were stubbornly sticking to the trusty cartridge, and they managed to cram some all-time greats onto those chunky pieces of plastic. From 3D platforming pioneer Super Mario 64 and all-time FPS great GoldenEye, to the arcadey space battles of Star Wars Rogue Squadron and best game ever contender The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the console was flush with top-notch titles that have been celebrated through the ages. We're casting them aside today, though. Yes, that's right, forget about bear and bird duos, flying foxes, sensational super spies, and foul-mouthed squirrels, because we're going for the obscure stuff here. We're interested in that particular breed of game that's rarely spoken about, but that is still really good. A few of you might have heard of them, and might even have played them, but for the most part, the following titles were overlooked when they were released, and are still overlooked now. So hopefully, we'll shine a light on something that escaped your notice. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 hidden gems for the Nintendo 64. Number 10. Space Station Silicon Valley Long before they were making politicians cringe with games based on violence and organized crime, Rockstar North were good pals with family-friendly Nintendo. This would all end thanks to another N64 hidden gem known as Body Harvest, but before their relationship was soured by depictions of genocidal aliens, Rockstar North, then known as DMA Designs, created Space Station Silicon Valley. In this eccentric platformer, players take control of a robot called Evo. Evo is reduced to a crawling microchip due to a faulty ejector seat, and must latch onto nearby animals to gain their attacks and abilities. While the subject matter had potential for a dark twist, Space Station Silicon Valley maintained a colorful, cutesy appeal that was right up Nintendo's street. The story concerned the titular space station, which was filled with animals, and launched into the cosmos like a sci-fi Noah's Ark. When the space station mysteriously returned, the animals had merged with the craft's machinery, and protagonist Evo and his human pal Dan Danger were sent to investigate. Alas, this cool premise, along with delightful visuals and great gameplay, couldn't save the game from obscurity. It might have had something to do with it launching alongside Ocarina of Time. Maybe it should have just stayed in orbit a little while longer. Number 9. Star Soldier – Vanishing Earth Cutting-edge FPS games with state-of-the-art graphics and innovative gameplay elements are great and all, but sometimes you just want to kick it old school. Star Soldier Vanishing Earth attempts to scratch that classic shooter itch on a console that was somewhat bereft of games from that genre, and it did a lovely job with it too. It might not look amazing compared to many of its contemporaries, and it doesn't really bring anything new to the table, but it is absolutely full of things to shoot with your unlimited laser blasts. Sometimes in video games, as in life in general, all you really need is a laser cannon with unlimited ammo. Star Soldier Vanishing Earth provides a fun, fast-paced, baddie blasting experience and features all of the ingredients you'd expect to find in an explosive, scrolling shooter. Multiple ship options with different strengths and weaknesses? Check. Toe-tapping upbeat music to accompany your glorious trail of destruction? Check. Hordes of spectacularly exploding enemies and bosses to take down? Oh, check. Look, don't think too hard about it, just strap in, put your space pilot helmet on, and go stop the Earth from vanishing, or whatever the storyline is, it really doesn't matter. Number 8. Buck Bumble While Rare were churning out classic after classic for Nintendo during the N64's lifespan, they weren't the only British developer on the 64-bit block. Argonaut Software were also in the mix, and had a previous relationship with Nintendo too, having worked alongside the Japanese giant on the creation of Star Fox for the SNES. Their single N64 effort had a similar feel, but instead of Star Fox's on-rails action, Buck Bumble mixes open-world exploration with its airborne gameplay. Oh, and also, you are a mutated Bumblebee resistance fighter, but I'm not sure that's much weirder than a fox in a spaceship, to be honest. 
The premise concerns a chemical accident in London that resulted in all nearby insects mutating. Many of these mutated mini-beasts formed an evil alliance called The Herd, and the protagonist, a heroic bumblebee, is fighting back against this corrupt creepy-crawly cabal. It all results in a fun, free-roaming shooter with various gameplay elements that expand on what the developer learned with Star Fox, such as being able to hover in one place or walk on the ground. Ignore that heavy use of distance fog and you'll have a great time, and if you don't like it, then you know what you can do. <laughs> Say it with me now, buzz off. <laughs> oh, we're having a great time today, aren't we? Number 7. Scars with its power-ups, tight track design, and quirky rides, SCARS for the Nintendo 64 found itself in the unenviable position of being in direct competition with the likes of Mario Kart 64 and Diddy Kong Racing. However, it wasn't developer Vivid Image's first dalliance with the big boys, as they previously went up against Mario Kart in the 16-bit era with Street Racer. SCARS, which apparently stands for Supercomputer Animal Racing, racing simulation provides an interesting take on the usual kart racer antics, eschewing wacky characters in wacky carts in favour of vehicles and circuits based on various animals and their habitats. Nothing cute here either. Scorpions, rattlesnakes, sharks, praying mantises, and other such animals with attitude take to the tracks. Take your puppies and kittens and go home, kids. This is where the cool animals race. While Scars was also available on the PlayStation, the Nintendo 64 version was reportedly superior in both its graphics and gameplay, meaning that Nintendo's console is the place to go if you've got an urge to drive a shark-shaped car around a track. Also, let's remember that its developers were brave enough to take on the mighty Mario Kart on more than one occasion, and we just have to admire that moxie. Number 6. Tom and Jerry in Fists of Furry if I asked you to name a fighting game on the N64 featuring numerous well-known and eye-catching characters, odds are you'd go with Super Smash Bros. But there is another option for fans of chaotic, cartoony brawling that got swept under the gaming rug a long time ago. Tom and Jerry in Fists of Furry takes the slapstick violence of the classic show and presents a multiplayer fighting game in which mouse and cat can vie for fluffy dominance. In truth, it plays more like Dreamcast gem Power Stone than Smash Bros, but this is no bad thing, as Power Stone was great, and this odd clone wasn't half bad either. There's something to be said for watching animated animals rampage around locations from the show, battering the bejesus out of each other with anything they can lay their paws on. Players pick from a whole host of the cartoon's recurring cast, including lots of peripheral characters that you probably forgot the name of. As something of a Tom and Jerry connoisseur myself, I happen to remember that the dog is called Spike and this other cat is called Butch, but now you know it too. <laughs> you learn something new every day. You're very welcome. Alas, as far as we can tell, there's no sign of Tom's owner, known in universe as Mammy Two Shoes, frequently depicted as simply a pair of legs and a broom that was used to shoe off the naughty critters. This is probably to do with the fact that she was later considered to be a rather offensive stereotype, which is fair enough, really, but I only wish they'd replaced her with her modern counterpart so she could have acted like Master Hand from Smash Bros. But, you know, instead of a hand, just legs. Is this? No, never mind. Number 5. Mischief Makers Two games that come up in N64 Hidden Gems discussions almost too often to be considered hidden anymore are Mischief Makers and Jet Force Gemini. Both are excellent, both underperformed at retail, and both have somewhat off-putting early 3D box art. We're going with Mischief Makers, however, as of the two, its box art is way more off-putting, oh god. In the game, players take control of a jetpack-equipped robotic maid known as Ultra Intergalactic Cybot G Marina Lightyears. Don't worry, you can just call her Marina, as she embarks on a quest to save her kidnapped creator. This happens on the planet Clancer, which is filled with blocks, enemies, and other inhabitants inscribed with bizarre, sad faces. Marina's main method of interacting with these grimacing entities is by grabbing them and shaking them. Whether it's a platform that needs moving or a boss that needs defeating, grabbing it and shaking it will likely solve the problem eventually. 
Developed by Treasure, a company previously known for an array of top-quality titles on Sega consoles, Mischief Makers received a decidedly average reception from critics who were clamoring for 3D worlds to explore. In more recent retrospectives, however, the game has been recognized as probably the console's shiniest hidden gem. And maybe it's time for someone to shake up a remake. Hmm. Number 4. Rakuga Kids Released exclusively in Japan and Europe, this madcap Konami-developed title is a one-on-one -on -one fighter with gameplay similar to the likes of Marvel vs. Capcom. However, unlike in literally any other game we can think of, Rakuga Kids presented a world where children's drawings come to life and face each other in epic battles to the death. Alright, maybe it's not quite that dramatic. The game has a light and breezy feel, with adorable, zany characters filling out the roster that seem to have come straight out of the imaginations of particularly inventive children. These include Marsa, a witch whose hat is a chicken, and Bear Tank, a bear with added tank parts. Admittedly, it's not going to blow away any hardcore Street Fighter aficionados or replace the likes of Fatal Fury in anyone's fighting game collection, but Rakuga Kids is a fun time with a unique visual style and interesting 2.5D graphics. Reviews were all over the place for this particular oddity, with scores ranging from 35 to 85% depending on who you asked. But we think its unique style makes it well worth a try. Can you think of any other games that look like Parappa the Rapper but play like Mortal Kombat? <laughs> no, didn't think so. Number 3. Ogre Battle 64 Person of Lordly Caliber with the N64 being one of the few Nintendo consoles without its own entry into the hallowed Fire Emblem series, fans of Japanese tactical strategy might have been feeling a little left out. After all, PS1 owners were enjoying Final Fantasy tactics, and Saturn fans had Shining Force 3 to scratch that particular itch. The grass certainly would have looked greener on the other side, especially if you missed out on our next hidden gem. Ogre Battle 64 Person of Lordly Caliber was the third game in the Ogre Battle Tactics Ogre series and mixed tactical and real-time combat, which differentiates it from the turn-based affairs mentioned earlier. The game's plot details a civil war and political strife in a fantastical land, and gameplay flows from the detailed stat and preparation screens to involved battles where players control up to 50 soldiers that are arranged into smaller units. It was praised as being a deep, addictive, and thoughtful strategy game, but N64 owners at the time were seemingly too caught up with plumbers and fairies to give it a go. Oh, for shame. Also, I'm really digging that subtitle. So much so, in fact, that I might make it MY subtitle. From now on, I would like you all to refer to me as Peter Austin, Person of Lordly Caliber. Thanks very much. Number 2. Beetle Adventure Racing The Volkswagen Beetle is one of the most iconic cars ever produced, and it's starred in a few of its own games over the years, including a couple of Herbie adaptations. Most of them aren't anything to write home about, but Beetle Adventure Racing for the N64 is an exception to that rule. Published by Electronic Arts, this driving game offered four players the chance to race around graphically impressive courses in gameplay reminiscent of EA's own Need for Speed series. Unlike Need for Speed, though, Beetle Adventure Racing encouraged players to experiment with racing lines and alternate routes in order to collect the crates needed to progress in the game. It also had a Beetle Battle mode, in which players raced to collect various bugs, giving the game plenty of variety to make up for the fact that you can only drive one car. Contemporary reviewers were suitably impressed, but the game is rarely talked about in modern conversations. As an interesting side note, the game was released in Australia as HSV Adventure Racing, and featured cars from Australian manufacturer Holden instead. That's like the American release changing all the cars into Dodge models, or the British version only featuring Mini Coopers. I guess they're just not a fan of Beatles down under. Maybe they've got enough creepy crawlies as it is. And number 1. Bangai O our second hidden gem developed by the hidden gem aficionados over at Treasure, Bangai O is more well known in the West for being a Dreamcast game, but it released first on the N64. 
It's a unique and addictive take on the side-scrolling shooter genre that very few people played. In Bangai O, players take control of one of two mech pilots and stomp and leap around arena-like stages, exploding buildings and collecting the fruits found within. Now, you might be willing to just take the fruit-based pickups at face value. After all, fruit is one of the accepted retro game points items ever since Pac-Man started munching on cherries back in the early 80s. But there's more to it here, though, as the story of Bangai O concerns our intrepid pilots taking on an organized crime ring who've been smuggling fruit. Truly a more heinous crime I have never witnessed in video games. Still, bootleg bananas aside, Bangai O is an artfully balanced multi-directional shooter that allows players to produce spectacular strings of bullet-based mayhem, and watching a pro in action really is something to behold. A couple of sequels even eventually made it to the West, one for the Nintendo DS and one for Xbox consoles. So what are you waiting for? Go on, go shoot some fruit bandits. I'll wait.